Zoom. They are met in Abuja, and I will be going to their communique very, very shortly. For the first time, they are gathering and finding a voice to make their demands heard by their masters in the north. When I say the north, I mean the Sharia north, not the Middle Belt. This is exactly what I expect Middle Belt governors to do as well. So we know that they are serious. And I believe that as time goes on, perhaps even the South may be able to incorporate the Middle Belt into their meetings, but that will be for another day. This very evening, we are going to pray as we are accustomed to doing here. We are going to hand over our proceedings very, very briefly and concisely to, to the Most High Elohim in heaven. We must pray. Chukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukukuk
one thing. You know, love is very deep. This is Dambu. I wanted to smuggle a listening device. Go, if you doubt me, go and read the, the article. It's in the Guardian newspaper today about this very meeting. They will tell you. But let me go. You know, when people do something that is right, I commend them. If you do something that is wrong, we, we shred you, we condemn you, we bury you alive. If need be. Of course, with facts and figures. They met today, they deliberated among many issues that were tabled before them or issues of concern that they felt they needed to address. And I'll read it for you very briefly. They affirm that the peoples of southern Nigeria remain committed for the very first time they're using the word the peoples of southern Nigeria, which means that all the nonsense being done by Tinubu and his cohorts is in vain. For the very first time there has been affirmation that the South is actually one. Since 1914, this is the very first time that they are stating publicly in a communique that the South is won by the elected leader, so to speak. For the purpose of our program this night, we may even call them leaders. Because they did well. I must tell you the truth. Now, let us proceed. And before you, why, who brought them together in the first place? One is our agitation. Second is the unity and union, the bond between the East and the West. Between Biafra agitators and those that tried to do the work, they have tried everything to break us, they could not break us. They had no alternative than to come together. Do you see what consistency does? This is the benefit of consistency. Once you're consistent in life, good things will come to you. And I also commend our good work brothers this very day for their resilience and their consistency. That is why, for the first time in a meeting, in a place, you have governors from the east, you have governors from the west, you have governors, you have governors, of course, together, saying something that makes sense for the first time in the, that I can even remember. The, the, the north, the Janjaweed will meet in Arawa House, they will take decisions affecting the whole of the zoo, affecting everybody, and they ram it down your throat. You have to accept it. And where they found this courage, I have no idea. Maybe they are, they are emulating what we are doing. They now understand that we have no fear before our enemies. They now understand that we are scrupulously clean, white and white and white and snow. They now uh, have developed, or should I say, uh, come to appreciate the essence of courage and determination. So for coming together, of course, I commend them. I do commend them because uh, they have done very, very well. During this very meeting, they affirmed that peoples of southern Nigeria remain committed to the unity of Nigeria. Of course, that's expected if you consider that they, are, they, they get their monthly allocation, whoever wants to go to us or up. So they will say they want unity of Nigeria. But they want unity of Nigeria on the basis of justice, fairness, equity, and oneness, and peaceful coexistence between and among these peoples with a focus on the attainment of shared goals for economic development and prosperity. English it has no meaning. The latter part of what they have written here has no meaning because they've been saying this rubbish for very many years. Now, the second point on the communique states, observe that the incursion of armed herders, criminals and bandits into the southern part of the country has presented a severe security challenge such that citizens are not able to live their normal lives, including pursuing various productive activities, leading to a threat to food supply and general security. Basically, they are warning Fulani, Janjawi, terrorist headsmen. Short from the ADL. They are now, they have now come out to say that they are concerned about the activities of the ADL. Consequently, the meeting resolve that open grazing of cattle be banned across southern Nigeria. In other words, if you see any cattle in any farm from tonight, anywhere in southern part of the zoo called Nigeria, you kill it. You are enforcing the law made, or should I say a directive executive order made by those that you claim you voted for to look after your affairs. They noted that development and population growth has put pressure on available land and increased the prospects of conflict between migrating headers and local populations in the south. Given this scenario, it has become imperative to enforce the ban on open grazing in the south, including 
cattle movement to the south by foot. Nobody should bring cattle into the south. In other words, Ruka is dead. Cattle highway is dead. Cattle path and cattle roads, they are all dead. From what they, from what they deliberated and came to conclusion to this very day in Ahaba. They concluded that anywhere you see Miguel Yala with their cattle on foot inside your farm or anywhere, of course, in the East, we call Eastern Security Network, and we treat them the way we have been treating them. Why are they saying this? Because we took the bulls by the horn. We don't, we, we don't mess about all this nonsense uh, uh, what they are doing. Uh, they are rubbish. I'm not taking, you're getting the rubbish. If we find you in the bush, you are bush meat. You are gone. Both you and your cattle, you're finished. So now that gave them some liver to come out to say that we are now banning cattle movement. Number four, we recommend that the federal government should support willing states to develop alternative and modern livestock management systems. And I wonder why are you taking permission from the federal government? Was it not the Oshun state or whichever state in, in the West, in Yoruba land? imported 250 pregnant uh, 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 cows from the USA. That one who didn't, once she, they told the cow, you are now in Nigeria, the cow broke away from the crate and wanted to run back to the USA. A governor was able to do it without permission. But these ones, of course, they have to bow to their Fulani masters. They are taking permission from the Fulani, they are Fulani gender. But as if to say that cattle herding, or should I say animal husbandry, or uh, uh, dairy products is the exclusive preserve of Mieti Allah. That is why you're going to the government to go and look for excuse to start your own cattle ranch in your states. Because you have agreed that nobody should enter into the cattle uh, 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 farming or rearing business unless you are a full running, unless you are Mieti Allah. Aren't nonsense. Pure bunkum. That is where I fold some of the things that they have said today. This one doesn't sit well with me. It doesn't sit. Why do you have to ask the state, uh, the Abuja, to allow you to 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 have cattle farms, or should I say, uh, rare cattle? Where you come from? You don't need permission from anybody. It is food for feeding of the people, so you don't need permission from any, anyone. Now, listen. They said they have agreed to progress to the. We have agreed that the progress of the nation requires that urgent and bold steps be taken to restructure the Nigerian Federation, leading to the evolution of state police, review of revenue allocation formula in favor of sub-national governments, and creation of other institutions which legitimately advance our commitment to and practice of true federalism. They are once again, they are begging for restructuring. That's what they're asking for, but along state lines because they are governors, because they know that if they ask for restructuring along the lines of region, vis-a-vis um, -vis the constitution of 1960 and 1963, somehow most of them will be out of a job. Do you see how, how parochial, do you see how selfish these people are? What concerns them is their office for them to protect it. That is why they are arguing for restructuring along state lines where you will not answer your name. We have somebody can say, oh, I'm from river state that has no meaning. I'm from delta state that has no meaning. I'm from a state that is named after a river, no longer the people. Because they know that if we ethnicize the identity of people in the zoo, our eyes or the eyes of everybody will open at the same time. They don't want to ethnicize it. What they want to do is to go with these same artificial boundaries. The same thing that the white man did, that is what they want to recreate. They want the entrenchment of the state system in the zoo in order for them to remain relevant and valid in office. And we are against that completely and totally. Now, these southern governors are recommending that in view of widespread agitations among our various peoples, uh, here we come, you know, we have now come into the play. Oduduwa and Biafra agitators, we are now in the game. They are now talking about us. Let us hear what they, have, what they had to say. We recommend that in view of the widespread agitations, of course, by IPOP and Oduduwa agitators, 
among other various peoples for greater inclusiveness in existing governance arrangements, the federal government should convoke a national dialogue as a matter of urgency. So we are now moving very close to that referendum we talked about, isn't it? Because after or once you pick up a gun, it will always end on a round table. Not the table with the four corners, no. The rectangular ones, no. Always on a round table. And they now understand it very clearly. They are now calling for national dialogue. If they have the clout, if they have the presence of mind or conviction to push these things through for their counterparts and their husbands in the north to agree to is another matter altogether. But at least they have said it. And they must also be commended for it. They also recommended that in, in deference to the sensitivities of our various peoples, there is need to review appointments into federal, you know, like federal character, that Fulani should not dominate everything. This is a very diplomatic way of saying that Fulani should not take over every sensitive security position in the zoo. It must also go to other ethnic groups as well. Now, this is one that I love very, very much. We have resolved to foster cooperation among the southern states and the nation at large. For the very first time, they are saying, that the Igbo and Yoruba will work together. Ison is there, Ijo is there, Ibibio is there. They think he's there for the first time since 1914. Some of you may be shocked. This is the only time since Lugard, that, that wretched Lugard, came into the zoo to turn us into wild beasts and animals. I'm telling you, this is the first time that that southern protectorate you've been hearing about, this is the first time that their so-called leaders have been since 1914, over 100 years ago, over 100 years ago, this is the first time they're meeting. Imagine if they had been meeting all these years as their northern counterparts were doing. Do you know why they met in Ahaba? They met for the simple reason that the divide and rule tactics of the north is no longer working. They can no longer divide us. And where I should give credit I won't hesitate to give credit. There's a group called those who go Mona, the one the ones that started this handshake across for us because of course the, the, the boundary is not in Niger, it's in Ecodomigo. They started all this movement to try to unite the South. Those who go Mona, they are called. They have been fighting for very many years. And I also give them credit because this is the as a result of what they have been fighting for over the years. What Biafra and Odudu agitators did was to give impetus to this very thing. That is why we are where we are today. For the first time since 1914, over one, over a century ago, over 100 years ago, the leaders of the South are meeting to discuss something, should I say, issues of common interest. They have resolved now to cooperate. <laughs> Let it not be that when your husband calls you now from the North, you, you, you start panicking. Uh, and saying I'm not part of it, I, I'm from the, the southeast, I'm from south south, I'm from southwest. Once you maintain that united front, you are impregnable. Even if one stupid governor may be responding to what the husband is requesting for from the north, once you are united and you're very, very strong, the Janjaweed will bow to you. These are the things you must understand and have that in mind. Now, they have expressed concern. This is where they now come to Radio Biafra. I want you to understand that this meeting today in Ahaba is all about those that want freedom. And what we have been preaching on Radio Biafra for very many years, now it is sinking in. They pretend they don't listen, but everybody listens to what we have to say on this noble platform. I mean, absolutely everybody. They listen to us, and we are winning this very war of ideology and war of philosophy. Why am I saying this? The governors expressed concern on the continued gridlock on Osho Diapapa Expressway, which we have been talking about now for years, and the chokehold it has extend it has exerted on the nation's economy, being the sole outlet from a proper wolf. The meeting therefore recommended 
recommended the activation and establishment of ponds in other states of the federation to create new jobs and promote socioeconomic activi activities in the country. What I have been preaching for very many years, isn't it? When, uh, the, when somebody, I was in the, in the dungeon in DSS, somebody came to me and asked me, what would you like to see done? And I said to them that you must open the seaport in Warren. Open the seaport in New Watcher that the white man named Port Harcourt, open the seaport in Calabar and allow our nature river ports to function. In fact, you can even go as far as building another one in Lokoja as well. I wrote these things down and I gave it to the federal government of Nigeria. When the Eastern governors called us for a meeting, I went to Eastern governors and I gave them the same thing. I never asked them for any money. I didn't ask them for anything. I didn't ask them to, to make my life better, to buy me a helicopter, to buy me a private jet, or to open, open an account for me in the Cayman Islands, stuffed with dollars. No, I asked them. I said to them that our people need employment. I said to them, go, the railways they are building in Nigeria today was my recommendation when I was in detention. I said to them, I'll give you, I'll give you this sound economic advice for free. But of course they misused it. I said to them, if you go to everything I've been preaching for the past, I don't know if it's seven or eight years, it is there. Now, for the first time, they have agreed. They have come together to agree that Wari Seaport should be opened. Calabar Seaport should be opened. Igbo Chad that they call Padaka Seaport should be opened as well. Now, do you understand it? I want all the intellectuals to understand how far we have gone. We always win. I said to all of you, in the end, we win. Just remain consistent. Do not waver. Do not move to the right or to the left. Remain where you are on the path of truth, justice, and honesty. Eventually, your ideas will prevail. And today, it has prevailed. They are now asking for the creation of jobs and the promotion of socio-economic activities in the southern part of the damnable zoological republic. The meeting expressed concern on the economic implications of another lockdown on the country. Now they know. They now know. This is what I want to talk about this evening. Before this is very news or communique was issued by the governors of the South, they are locking everybody down to stifle the economy to move, harden the terrorists into the South to commence the final onslaught, the final phase of the Islamization agenda of the Sokoto Caliphate. It's not nothing to do with COVID. Absolutely nothing to do with COVID. They want to bring these people down to our land to commence the final onslaught before 2022 when they had hopes to overrun every inch of territory in the south on their path to the full Islamization of the damnable contraption we know as Nigeria. They do not want another lockdown and therefore suggested greater coordination and cooperation between federal and state governments in evolving strategies for dealing with the pandemic. In other words, no, you see, Fabraka Mohammed cannot see the National Rock anymore and issue directives saying, oh, we're in a lockdown. Then what stupid lockdown? The Fulanis are using it to stifle us. We are rice. We are rice. The borders are opening in North Hall. They can bring in rice. They can export cement. They can cooperate with their Niger Republic brothers and sisters and cousins. But in the South, they say no movement, lockdown. They want to stifle us economically because if you don't have money, there is no way you can lobby the world. There is no way you can buy weapons. There is no way you can exert any measure of influence. They want to be the ones handling the money alone. That is what they are planning to do. But I'm glad that the seven governors have come to their senses or have realized that eventually, or at last, they, they must rise up to say something about this stupid, ridiculous lockdown that the Ganja Weed Caliphate is proposing. Now, they express very grave concern on the security challenge current, currently plaguing the nation and strongly urge that uh, <laughs> Yusuf come and address also <laughs> southern governors. That thing I've been preaching. How can you have a country where the president doesn't talk to you? Is that possible? Because they know we are waiting with the we are waiting for them. Once that idiot comes out to speak, we will dissect, we will analyze, and they understand it. They do not want to put themselves to shame. That is the reason why he is no, he's no longer talking. Even the recorded ones he used to get once every eight weeks. You know, now the southern governors are saying to Asarok, 
please talk to us. I want to hear from you. Because they themselves are now convinced that Buhari is dead. They now know also that there is somebody in Asarok. Now they're asking him to come out to speak live to the people. And we know he can never do it. Because we are waiting. We now, we have recruited new scientists. There is no trick that we bring. No artificial intelligence. There is no deep fake video they will bring out now that will not dissect from top to bottom. From top to bottom. Now they express their gratitude to, to their host, which is the final call. He has done very well, of course. He has done very, very well to host this very meeting. I'm not excusing his idiocy and stupidity, but of course, for hosting, for, for once they're finding their voice. Do you know what? Do, do, do you know why they're talking? Because they know that the fallen can no longer divide them. No longer can they be divided. No more. Because even if you divide the governors, the men on the ground, the foot soldiers on the ground, they are united. The East and the West, we are now bound together. That is why, for the very first time in over a hundred years, the South is reasserting its identity. Because the North will always come and say, we are the North. This is a minority of them from the Sharia region. They have emasculated the Middle Belt. Then I say, we are the North. But when they come to us, they say, oh, this is East and this is West. They divided Nigeria into three to suit them. The North, the East and the West, when they come as the North, they come as one block, one effective dominant block. This one is, is playing his own corner, West, and this one East. Now, East and West have come together. They, 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 let, the, let the war begin. That was what they did. And I must commend them, uh, those that attended. I must commend all of them that went there. But I'm sure that, um, let me see if, if, if Mrs. was there. Uh -huh. Mrs. Mrs., where are you? Uh, I'm looking at the names of those that signed. Oh, Mrs. Ken. He, she came as well. Because when he's with uh, Tambuali, he says she. That when he comes out to, to snort cocaine and be talking rubbish, he says he. So the he, she, or she, he was there as well. Now we must put. That was what they deliberated upon today. And we must understand it. So one of the things they discussed was the lockdown. The lockdown declared yesterday by the federal government of the zoological republic that people Mrs. was there people, of course, Mrs. Uh, uh, after that uh, 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 maybe tonight uh, she's briefing husband Tambua you know what love has to love is sweet, uh, have you seen their picture? how they are selling it I, I, in fact uh, I said to my wife today that we, we need to try this type of pose and picture, it's so nice, we are going to do it very 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 shortly we are going to pose like that as well. Did you, did you see Wiki and Tampua? Hey! It's not as if they just fell in love only last week. Such, such beautiful, beautiful picture. I, I, I like it so much. I, I like it so much that I had to comment on it. So beautiful. You can, you can see, you know when people are in love, there is nothing sweeter than love. And now, you know, that, that first two, two or three months or maybe other, maybe they're doing their own anniversary now. You can see how happy they are. I say, and I wish them well, honestly. I wish uh, she, she and him well. They, they, they should um, live uh, happily ever after. The lockdown declared yesterday by the damnable zoological republic is a ploy for terrorists coming to our land. Therefore, we are not going to obey this lockdown. And I'm asking all Biafrans, everybody in Biafran territories, do not obey this lockdown. Let him come and announce it himself. Kaiba and the entire Flonic Cabal cannot be sitting down and writing garbage all the time for us to be, to be, to be adhering to. PVM, Nin, and all this rubbish. Let that, let that dummy inside us rock come out and address the requirement to say to people, this is the reason why we are doing this. On a live televised address to the people. Not all that recorded mumbo to that rubbish that they trot out from time to time. Somebody, so something as monumental as restricting people's movement 
is being announced by the press secretary to the government. So, so, it's an insult to all of you, if you don't know, let me tell you. It's an insult to all of you that still believe in, in, in your zoo, the zoological republic. Come out and address people. And I'm asking all their friends, do not obey this latest phase of lockdown. The reason being that they want to use the dead of the night to move their fighters into our forests because we have defeated their foot soldiers. We have defeated them. They now want to use the cover of the night. You will see them only following people with their police and army and an escort for that matter, moving men and materials down to the south. We must resist this stupid lockdown. It is not going to hold in Biafra land. And I must also say, because they, they also announced today that they are now that they are, they are rolling out a new uh, security, whatever rubbish, for their South East and their South South to meet this Biafra. I am warning every coordinator, do not sleep in your house starting from tonight. All coordinators and deputy coordinators look for somewhere to go to. We are in the trenches right now. We are now, we are about to experience freedom fighting what it's like. It is not comfortable, it is not rosy at all. Do not sleep at home. Do not sleep at home. Change your phone numbers. Even change the phone itself. Or else they will... Now, DSS is finding it difficult to track people. Because we are making their life a misery as well, and they understand. We are waiting for them. Their own time is coming. And when it comes, I am sure, I am sure that all of you will approve of it. They say that Buhari, whoever they are calling Buhari, we don't know. Uh, of course, we know him to be Yusuf Abu Bakr Mohammed. They have announced fresh security measures to tackle insecurity in the southeast, and I'm asking them this very simple question. Have you ever heard them before? Despite the progress being made by Boko Haram, ISIS in West Africa, Al-Qaeda in the Maghreb, uh, uh, ISIS, and Suri, or whatever they call it, Miyat Yala, terrorist group, and all the rest of them. Have you ever heard them say we are rolling out new security measures for the northwest or the northeast or north central, where the Fulanis are pillaging and killing every place? The answer is no. But now Buhari approves fresh security measures to tackle security in southeast and south south. In other words, I told you that they're going to come. You know, Fulani has this very stupid and senseless pride in them. I know that their pride won't allow them, they must come. And remember, I will remind I will keep reminding you of this every blessed day. This Fulani army will die in Biafra land. They want to move them in. Maybe to start their, they are doing their, uh, now is abduction. Where uh, this is an abduction. Very soon they will try their shit outside to see if it will work. But I'm not sure it is going to work for them again, considering that all the entire southern governors have now come together to issue a communique, stating it very, very clearly that the way they have been handling things in the past hasn't moved the situation forward. Now what they're trying to do is to try to bring in a new measure. And I want to warn Fulani Janja with the Nasarok, any measure you bring to our land, we're equal to it. Anything you bring, we are going to face you. You understand that very clearly. Okay? So it doesn't matter what the AIG does, what the IG does, and all these idiots. The more you move men down to the east, the more the north will be taken. Of course, I know it's all the part of the game plan. What they want to do is to emasculate, to intimidate, so, so we can become wretched, illiterate cowards. We will now allow you to enter into our land or uh, send us away from our land. Will come maybe to IDP camps in Amazonia, but it's not going to happen, and you understand that very well. And as I told you, you will take the bait, you will come, we will lure you into our land, and your army will die there. And the places you left in the north, in Sharia, Kor, Arewa North, will be taken over by, by, by terrorists and criminals that will never, ever, ever listen to any of you. These are the things you must understand. So we are ready for you. Anytime you want, you can bring the game on. We are waiting for you. But you can never, ever have it easy anymore. All that thing that people come out, you open fire anyhow. You know that if you open fire on the people, you will be confronted there and there immediately. And you are going to die sooner or later. You will also perish. So now you understand. It doesn't matter what you announce or what you're not announcing. But we are assuring you that you are not going to prevail on 
of succeed in intimidating the children of God into submission. It cannot happen. You can try that nonsense elsewhere. It will work for you. But you say in the East, it can never ever work. Never ever work. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. Because when tyranny, as somebody said, when tyranny becomes a law for the government, massive rebellion becomes a mandate for the people. Because you cannot keep pushing us to the war all the time, pushing us to the limits, massacring innocent civilians over and over and over again, and you don't expect them to fight back, you must be foolish. I want to remind all the intellectuals and sophisticated morons, all of them, go back a few years ago, the slaughter, the killing of IPOB family members, peaceful protesters, Shia protesters, and fans. Every time I know a police will come, they open fire. All of you will talk. But now in our land, they are always uh, looking behind their backs. They don't know where that is coming from. Because I assure them, they are all going to perish. The people telling you that they have a plan to secure the east, southeast and south-south, according to them. Armed robbers invaded Asorok. So we are led to believe only under this regime, only under this regime, something unheard of in the whole world. It's never been, it's, it's, I don't know where these Nigerians, I don't know who gave them uh, their brain. Maybe it was picked from the dustbin, I have no idea. Some of you may have dismissed this issue of armed robbery in Asorok. But I want you to understand something that's never happened anywhere before in the, in, the, in the history of the world, or modern governance. Never, ever happened before. They said they sacked the chief of staff um, um, home, Ibrahim Kambari and Abubaka Maikano, and they stole valuable assets. That is how corrupt the foreign people are. I told you before that there's something the foreign is they have perfected over the years. When they finish draining any particular department of parasite or dry, they set it alight to destroy every implementing evidence. I am sure that whatever they may have stolen from the homes of Ibrahim Kambari and this Abubaka Maikano could be financial instruments worth billions of dollars belonging to the people. If you ask yourself, oh, armed robbers can, how can armed robbers, if armed robbers can enter or should I say unknown gunmen enter into Asorok to ban this, steal state valuables? Now tell me which part of the zoo is safe. They did not sit down to say to themselves, let us look for a way to, to strategize and devise new security um, approach to Asorok, to guard it. The southeast and south south are interested in, in the east, Biafra. And newspapers and their editors publish this type of junk every place a day. And I'm asking them, I have no shame, honestly. Armed robbers came to the seat of government to steal and walked away free. You shamelessly came out to announce that you are devising a new strategy for the East. You have not been able to devise a strategy to keep yourself safe inside that sort of That is how they reason. It is supposed to be the most secure place in Nigeria. It is now every man for himself. That is why I commend Governor Autumn for what they have done. Now, if I will ask the Southern Governors, when next to your meeting, invite your Middle Belt counterparts, and you see that the zoo will collapse within two weeks. Not just collapse. All those things that you have been asking for, they will give it to you. That is why all of you must come to the fullness, or should I say, to the realization that you must, you must, without fail, Keep on doing what you're doing in terms of defending your land. You must defend your land. Look at people suggesting. <laughs> I mean, can you go to, can you go to, to, how can I put it, to a gate man in a hospital and ask them to administer any form of treatment because you found them at the gate. Because you found them at the gate of a hospital. These people, they're like gate men. In a hospital, you are you are prescribing a remedy that you cannot even yourself inculcate into the plan to keep your own self safe. You're not safe. So you're busy 
uh, I'm dishing out directive to go to when I have a new plan. I'm asking the IG of police go and secure Asorok first. Go and secure Abuja where children are no longer going to school. Go and secure Abuja first. Go and recover Medugri. Go and recover parts of uh, Mjube. Go and recover parts of Zafa from the same terrorists that you grew before suggesting how this can be restored in the East. If you want to use that as a cover to bring in your army, they're going to die there anyway. So there's no need. I don't have body my car. I will not discuss myself from this. Bring them out, you're going to see. And I want to warn our Dudu White brothers, and I made it very clear to, to the activists last night, that the flan is imported uh, a lorry load of arms and ammunition, and the containers were being escorted by the military last night, and they offloaded this very consignment somewhere in ocean but i'll come to that later on i will give you the full details of exactly what transpired and that was why Tinubu said that we had planned to bomb lagos something that is undoable in a billion years in a billion years they think we are very good students of of, of contemporary history we know the history of the war i know personally how people from the west viewed the move by Biafran army to go and capture the seat of power or to neutralize them. It wasn't even a, an army of conquest to conquer the Obama people, of course not. It was that the heading straight to the Rambats in those days to go and neutralize them. I, I know personally how my Yoruba friends have explained to me their trepidation and their fear over that very um, expedition led by Banjo then. We know. So we cannot try anything stupid. We can never, ever, ever, not on this earth, antagonize our Yoruba brethren. I will do whatever. It's impossible. We can never do it. We meet all the time. We have meetings all the time. So how can we? Are you telling me that all those gallant men in OPC, all those gallant men all over Yoruba land, they cannot do any work? If we agree that they should go and start, uh, you know, disturbing those who are disturbing them, they have more than enough men to do it. More than enough to do it. We don't have to go there. But they lied as usual, as they always do. As they always do. As they always do. But in the north, what is happening? You, some of you must be aware of what DSS is doing in and around Abuja. And do you also know that DSS, get, they also get a cut of the ransom. Are you aware of that? Do you know that the DSS or SSS, uh, they should be properly referred to, do you know that they get a share from bandits? So Fulani people are not even happy owning all the oil wells, controlling the Ministry of Finance, controlling us, controlling almost everybody, controlling the defense budget. Do How many of you here are aware that the daughter of Abake Ari is the one responsible for all Nigeria's investment abroad. It's called sovereign wealth. Investment in stock markets all over the world is the daughter of Abakiari. They control everything. Federal inland revenue. Every source of finance. Finance minister is always following. Even that, even when you plant your joro or you plant maize or you plant cabbage or carrot, the same Fulani terrorists will come and destroy it, use it to feed their cattle, and kidnap you in the process. Even that little money you have made by selling maize, or yam, or, or, or cabbage, or watermelon, you now use it to pay the same Fulani to release your child, release your father, or release your mother back to you, safely. Do you see what is happening? And you'll be astonished. I don't know why the mainstream media in the zoo doesn't want to give this very particular piece of news the coverage that it deserves. How we receive weapons from DSS agents and share the gains by full and bandits, full and terrorists. DSS that is busy abducting people. Oh, they, they want us to go into kidnapping and armed robbery as well. That's what they want. So we can start sharing the money. Okay, that's what they're looking for. They are, as I'm speaking, they are now in Abba and everywhere, claiming they are implementing security strategy. But the same DSS, I don't know why they are National Assembly. I have no idea why these people, 
should not be investigated, prosecuted, and shut down, DSS. Instead of contributing to making your lives as safe as it can be within the contraption, they are making it worse. I read for you. They told the German television, Deutsche Welle, in a recent report, that they borrow money from DSS agents. And who are the people in charge of DSS? Fulani. Who are the people playing guns and ammunition from DSS? Fulani terrorists. That is why the South must understand they are all in this whole thing together. They are all in it together. As the security is worsening in Nigeria, armed bandits, the rising different parts of the country, have made a startling revelation to the German, to, uh, uh, I think it is the flagship media in Germany, Deutsche Welle, that they have been receiving weapons from operatives of DSS. You see their DSS, you see them with their uniform DSS. They are worse than bandits. These are hardened criminals, and none of them are fallen. Very, very sadly. The criminals told Dr. Fella in a recent report that they borrow weapons from the state agents and then go to work to share the illegal cotton gains together. They go, you pay ransom, they go to school. You now I know the reason why they keep sending that terrorist check to come to them negotiate. They know where they are. DSS will not go and get them or, or mount a rescue operation to, to release those who have been kidnapped. Instead, they are waiting for you to pay the ransom. They will tell Sheikh Gubi, tell them to pay, tell them to pay. It's dicey. Operationally, it's not difficult. The terrain is, uh, there is a valley, there is a hill. Talking rubbish. Then you give that 100 million naira ransom to the bandits. DSS will collect their own cut. Maybe take their guns or say, oh, boys, well done. In the same one, Nigeria. In the same one, Nigeria. Now the world knows because Dutch and Fella carried it. That thing we have been saying for years that all the full and cabal that are in it together, every full and person in any sensible position in government is part of this very grand conspiracy to overwhelm all of you. If you don't submit to their will willingly, they will use every tactics, including terror, to get it from you. Now the whole world knows, including the government of the USA, the EU, the UK, Japan, Russia, China, everyone now is fully aware of the fact that Nigerian security forces are the ones fueling insecurity for financial benefits. It is here in the news. Go and Google it, it is very clear. Insecurity. How we receive weapons from DSS agents and share the gains. These are full of people, perhaps from Timbuktu, telling Dutch affair. And all of you are there shouting one Nigeria, the, making the, the, the Janja way to feel that you need them. Whereas they are the ones that need us to survive. I have asked you this thing before. Go and read the amalgamation document. Lugard made it very, very clear. The reason why we are amalgamating the North and the South is because the North is poor. They have nothing. Till today they still have nothing. These are the things you must bear in mind. The time we are live and direct for those who are peddling, I'll come to to that thief who Paul made it to later on. To those writing junk that uh, Interpol is, is looking for for Nam the time. He, he fled from London. The time now is 7.55, live. Interpol, they know where I am. Everybody knows. If you want to know, you will know. <laughs> this will be last year. Yeah, uh, cheap gutter propaganda. That was how you managed to put um, uh, the, the late dead Buhari in office by writing junk and lying. You don't know we are IPOB. We are very, very formidable. You don't understand that? We are highly, highly formidable. You must understand it. You must understand it. I don't blame the Flanagan Janjaweed. I blame those from the South. Let us believe that after this meeting today, that the Southern leaders, so to speak, or the governors in their various capacities, will now have the need to be meeting more regularly to articulate a common position and stand when it comes to the issue of governance within the Damnable Zoological Republic. Because all of you planning to come and conduct security, whatever rubbish in the East, all of you against the agitation to break up Nigeria 
I want to also remind all of you that there was a time when the Fulani Janjaweed Caliphate inspired the northern peasants to rebel and revolt against the Nigerian state. They threatened secession. During that very period, the British government did not send their armies to go and kill all of them. Instead, it was Dr. Zikiwe. I don't want to say his first name because I share the same first name with him and it irritates me. It was Dr. Zikiwe that appealed to the Fulani Janjaweed not to secede from Nigeria in 1953. So when you hear a Malam, when you hear uh, 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 Alimajri writing nonsense on Facebook, I want you to remind him or her it was you people, the Fulani controlled northern part of Nigeria that planned to secede from Nigeria. This is not 1966 coup or anything. Before then, in 1953, the first people to ask to exit Nigeria is the Fulani Caliphate of the North. But today, when you hear them talking, you will think somehow that have, because then they have not discovered oil. Not at least only in commercial quantity. Now there is oil. There is a common wealth. There is one money. Common must flow from oil and gas in the east. Everybody now wants to die for one Nigeria. But it was Zig's voice. I don't know if, if I, it's a very lengthy article. Maybe there some of you don't even read it. It's, it's, I think it was published by a Guardian newspaper. Six voice that voided planned secession by the North in 1953. It was Dr. Zikiwe that appealed to the North to stay in Nigeria. They never went to war. Britain never went to... Britain never deployed troops to say, Oh, you want to break our empire? We're going to kill you. Now ask yourself, why is it that the foreigners are not deploying soldiers to go and kill people who are agitating in the South? Why? When they themselves agitated to leave, Nobody killed them. In 1953, when Northern Nigeria, we are beginning to consider secession from the Nigerian colony, that will soon be a nation. Dr. Ziki will give a speech before the caucus of his political party, the National Council of Nigeria and the Cameroons, in Yaba, Lagos, Nigeria, on May, on May 12th, 1953. Tomorrow will be the anniversary of this. That speech, why not disallowing secession suggested that there will be grave consequences if the northern region became independent from the nation that was into a man. Zeke did not threaten anybody. The British people who were in control of the zoo that they themselves created did not send any army to go and quell the secession. That is the reason why they banned history in your schools. That is why some of you do not know history. The first people to attempt secession from Nigeria were the Flanders of Janjaweed in 1953. Who stopped them from seceding? An evil man. Very, very sad indeed. You know, somehow, it's either that God wants to destroy us or we want to bring calamity upon ourselves all the time. Can you imagine what the lives of ordinary people would have been like? had Zeke not intervened to persuade the northern Fulani Caliphate to remain within one Nigeria. There is something you need to understand very, very clearly. Now the Aziki West said the north will suffer because the north had nothing. Absolutely nothing. They are so called we are not pyramid. We are not... <laughs> it's not a pyramid at all. They, they, they built plank scaffolding and piled two bags of granite on top of each, each other to give you the impression that they have granite when they had nothing absolutely nothing go and check it and do your own research Zeke was begging them because Zeke himself grew up in the north Zeke said I grew up I was born and I grew up in Zungir please don't go away if you go away you have nothing you're going to suffer you're going to be impoverished and they listened, and they remained in one Nigeria. And now the devils have turned. And what are they doing to those who are determined to leave? The zoo that the Britain created. They are killing them, they are maiming them, they are shooting them aside. 
whereas it is these same northerners that first floated the idea of secession. I hope it is becoming very, very clear for everybody. What they have given to us are headsmen, terrorists, rapists, murderers, kidnappers, and costing the talent and breath of, of, the, of, the, of the zoo called Nigeria. They do not care. And we cost it. It was the fault of an evil man. Now I understand why sometimes I will speak or write very angrily about Dr. Sikiwe. Now I understand the reason why. It wasn't his fault after all. Today we are agitating to be free. Today we are fighting to be free in the East and in the West. And what have they done? The APC led government of Lagos State, in conjunction with the Lagos State Commissioner of Police, having concluded plans to attack some parts of Yoruba land and blame it on IPOB, just to create a discord between the Yoruba nation and the Biafra nation and to destroy the cordial relationship that these two agitating nations have maintained very lately. They want to destroy it. Tinubu knows that he's not going anywhere. So he has now unleashed his machinery. Everything is national has now come out to try to fight us, to try to fight me, and to try to fight the children of God. But it's going to fail. I want the world to know tonight that Tinubu will later pay good luck, because that's not how they behave in Lagos, to attack some parts of that very city so they can later accuse IPOB of masterminding the attacks. This is what some unscrupulous politicians, very desperate criminals are doing in Nigeria today. I want to ask Tinubu, who is a thief and a criminal, why did you not come to the pages of newspapers and television screen to announce the numerous sackings of Yoruba villages by Fulani Janjaweed, bandits and terrorists? Because there are Yoruba people right now in the Republic. Why was there no hoo-ha about Yoruba villages being sacked by Fulani Janjaweed? Why? That tells you all you need to know about these people and their intentions. Uh, Yoruba, I want to ask them, are uh, Yoruba people not refugees in the Republic? Who put them in refugee camps in the Republic? Are you telling me that Yoruba media is afraid of their foreign masters and in their docility, real damage is being done in Yoruba land? You have the courage to link IPOB to whatever nefarious activities that you're planning to unleash in and around Lagos. But people that placed, that pursued Yoruba people into the Republic, you cannot write about them nor admonish them the way you have tried to do against the squeaky clean image of the indigenous people of Biafra. This is very, very sickening. It is a very desperate and psychopathic attempt by this very thief, this very glutinous and insatiable criminal. That will do anything to appease his Fulani overlords. The same man that introduced ethnicity and tribe into the NSAS protest, along with the same corrupt and satanic Yoruba media. They thought they were going to succeed. <laughs> they tried it yesterday and it failed. Only one tweet, I tweeted, only one. The whole thing collapsed. And our first, when they were pursuing Yoruba Ududuwa activists, and I just to ask them, what, what, do what, do what do you have to say? IPOB is trying to bomb Lagos. What do you have to say? They said it's a lie. Go and ask their journalists. All the people they call, all the heavyweights, they are in front liners in Yoruba land. They called all of them yesterday to condemn IPOB. They said, no, IPOB cannot do such. Nobody, in fact, from the South can do such a thing. It's impossible. They were disappointed. One tweet, uh, we destroyed all their lies. That was why they came up with another one today. You know, they think if they keep writing all this junk, somehow they'll demoralize us. We'll say, oh, things are no longer go going the way that we want it to go. When that one failed yesterday, they come up with the nonsense today. And then the colonel ran away from London. He's wanted by Interpol. I have been telling you I want to go to court. International court. We are the whole world. In fact, all the... 
by the time we finish with that very legal process, if, if, if they see a Nigerian anywhere, they will spit in their in the, in, uh, the useless faces. I'm telling the truth. If you don't know, let me make you understand. The same man who brought ethnicity into NSAS, they think, I told you, I warned all of you before. You know, that is why when people call themselves, oh, I'm a prophet, and now they say, I said you're a fool. I told you, they will try ethnicity. They will try the use of force. It won't work. They will try ethnicity. It's not going to work. They are going to try religion. Those three things are in play in the zoo at all times. Those are the dynamics that determines where the wind blows in terms of political patronage and reward in the zoo called Nigeria. It was, uh, it was, uh, uh, Ibuho that said he was going to flush out Fulani killers from the bushes of Yoruba land. And barely 12 hours afterwards, IPOB is now planning an attack on Lagos. <laughs> I am aware of the hatred directed towards the Africans, I'm sure of that. But the mistakes of the past I will not repeat. The mistakes of Nzobo, that is why I'm against anybody toppling this Flanay Janjaweed government by force. I am an opponent of coup. I hate coups, I can't stand them. I allow the people to revolt. The people who should revolt. If there is any conscience in the zoo called Nigeria, June 12th, come June 12th, everybody must rise up. I want every ethnic group in Nigeria to deal with their own issues. That is why we cannot interfere in the issues raging in Yoruba land. And I wholeheartedly trust our Yoruba brothers, our brethren, who are fighting for their freedom, I am begging all of you, please descend on these, your criminals, as we are descending on ours, and do it very, very quickly, because they are making your lives a misery. That second-class Muslim, PC, uh, police commissioner <laughs> in Lagos State, he's a Yoruba Muslim, but he can only the Juma prayers in the north. Go and ask him. If in any mosque, even the mosque we have in Yoruba land, if a foreign boy of 10 years walks into the mosque, he will lead the prayers. I, I want to ask the, this Lagos police committee, his name is Hakim, somebody. You were an ADC at the camp to Tinubu. Now you're a police commissioner. You think that all those, I believe that nobody can tell you to go to the now. So Biafra is coming. It doesn't matter what you do, it is coming. As I said before, you know, to pick up a gun to defend your right to exist as a human being, to pick up a gun to defend your right to exist as a human being is like losing your virginity. You don't get it back anymore. So we are going to keep defending our land until they give us a friend. That is not a way, that is not a way. If they kill us, we kill them. I say it live on air so that the whole world can hear me. Oh, so you mean I will stay in my house, you will come, you will kill me, you will go. Ah, but now that's, that's rubbish. Every army formation in the East now understand once you kill somebody, you, some of you are going to die. It's as simple as that. That thing you want, we give it to you. Have you been hearing them shooting and killing people? Or Fulani headsmen all over the place. There was a news I saw today, earlier today, Fulani headsmen somewhere in Anambra, and I said, Show me the pictures and the videos. These are people trying to discredit the work, the excellent work that ESN is doing. Show me the video of the Fulani movement. And I, by this time, I will ask you, go back there and see if you find them. Men are doing a lot of work, a lot of work a lot of work and we must support them anybody coming to our land thinking you are going to kill people then you are grossly grossly mistaken and this very foolish let me tell you that they are all in it together i don't want to say anything about yoga muslims because i know that they are more urbane more sophisticated more enlightened and more progressive in their outlook and their thinking but there's something that i want our people to pay very close attention to this very moment, please, very, very important. Do you remember that very fire 
that broke out in Oshodi. I think that was um that was um last week on Thursday night, destroying goods worth millions of naira. Last ma or last time I went there, Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, full of people who went to school. They attributed the fire incident to explosives and accelerants used by unknown individuals. Full learning in Lagos, housed by Tinubu, went and bombed Oshodi Market. This was last week. They never ever blamed IPOB last week. Go and Google it. Lagos Market fire caused by explosives. Understand this very clearly. Because the full armies have penetrated to the land. They are everywhere. They are now willing and ready to unleash mayhem. They went to show the market where the Yoruba people are doing business, where Igbo people are doing business, they planted explosives. And the experts whose job it is to identify the cause of any fire, they went there, they investigated, they said the fire was caused by explosives and accelerants. The thing that will make it the fire to spread very, very quickly. At least 90 shops and offices were destroyed, raised to the ground. The outbreak occurred at Cairo Market in Oshodi, Lagos, on Thursday night of last week, destroying goods worth millions of naira. Now listen, the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, LASEMA, attributed the fire incident to some form of explosives and accelerants used by unknown individuals. When Premium Times, a foreign minister by mind you, visited the scene on Friday morning, scores of traders gathered at the entrance of the market, counting their losses and lamenting the disaster. This is the work of Mieti Allah, full and terrorists inside Lagos. It happened last week. Nobody blamed the full and Nobody remembered the IPOB then. It is because now we are hitting Tinubu very, very hard because of the expose I did on the criminal. That is why all of a sudden they are now planning to bomb. Whereas bombs have been going off in Lagos before now. Even last week, Thursday, a bomb went off. Now, let me tell you what they did. To tell that Tinubu does not mean well for Yoruba people. I want to prove to my Yoruba brothers that Tinubu. And that idiot called a uh, uh, police commissioner do not mean well for you. Now listen. The experts went to the ocean, went to the market and discovered that Fulanis had used a bomb to destroy businesses and livelihoods. Yet the Lagos Commissioner of Police came out to say to claim. That the Oshodi bombing was not the, as a result of explosives being used. This is happening only last week. Understand this very clearly. The experts went there and said, last time I went there to say explosives were used. The police, police commissioner now accusing IPOB of wanting to bomb Lagos said, oh no, 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 the, 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 the explosives weren't used. Lagos State Police Commission of Police, Mr. Hakim Udumoshi. I'm reading the news for you. All the same thing there in the news. You can Google it. Lagos State Commission of Police, Mr. Hakim Udumoshi, has dismissed rumors of fire incident at, at um, Cairo Market in Oshodi as being caused by explosives. Udumoshi, who conducted an on the spot assessment, on the spot, he just went there and said he did not go with any, any form of equipment or. or or detection apparatus to determine if the explosion was caused by a bomb or not. He just visited with his men and said it's, it's not a bomb because they are part and parcel of it. Tinubu and this is boy, Odumosu, they are part of the gang bringing terror into Yoruba land and looking for who to pin it on. Experts, remember I read before, experts went there and said the explosions were caused by explosives and accelerants. Police commissioner without any training in detection of explosive devices went there and on the spot he just came out of his um, uh, uh, van or truck and said, uh, No, I'm here to debunk the news. Uh, it's not explosive. That uh, explosives weren't used. Do you understand? A police commissioner only barely four days afterwards miraculously 
IPOP is planning to bomb Lagos. That who bombed us to the market last week? The idiot cannot tell us. Or what caused the fire then? He cannot tell us. Because himself and his master Tinubu wants to drive a wedge between what Tinubu is counting on is that the votes from the west and the votes from the north. Because they, they will say he's a Muslim will now propel him to Asorok. Because they have decided that no Christian is ever, ever going to preside over the affairs of the zoo. In fact, this is in the Hadith. Some of you don't read Quran, but I read it very, very well. And the commentary, which is Hadith, the lives and, and uh, the lives and words of the Prophet. It's called Hadith. Go and read it very clearly. It's there. No non-Muslim should preside over a Muslim state. So what they want to do is, after eight years of Janja Buddhism, they give it to Yoruba Muslim for eight years. After that, it goes back to the north for another eight years. To another Muslim. Then it comes to the middle belt for another eight years. Do you, do you see the game they're trying to play? Do you understand it very clearly? This man is part and parcel of those bringing te terror into Yoruba land. Odumosu, who, con who conducted an on-the-spot assessment of the damages at the market on Friday, May the 7th. An inspection happened on Thursday. They went and inspected it. Uh, the Lassema people, this food went on Friday, May the 7th. And said that they have not discovered any bomb. How can you destroy the bomb? exploded now. <laughs> he's a, he's, he's an, uh, a learned uh, uh, officer of the law. He went there after the, the explosive device must have gone off to say, I did not find any, because it had exploded already. You cannot find it. He said, he, he said, I could not find any bomb. How can you find any bomb, any bomb when the bomb has already been detonated? I, don't, I, I, can't, I can't understand this people and, and how they reason. And luckily, did you see how God works? Luckily for us, Nobody pinned this very dastardly act on IPOB. Imagine if they had said IPOB did it last week. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine? These are the things that that you know people must understand and come to terms with. These are the people that you are calling your security agents. He's like a DSS. He's like DSS. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. That is how this zoo works for you. Imagine they had pinned it on 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 um, IPOB last week. Imagine what would have happened. Imagine what would have happened. By now, there would have been destruction of goods and services. Some people who are not aware of their plans will begin to think that somehow... Uh, IPOB is behind it. Do you see how God works for his children? Explosion happened. Experts came and said a bomb was used. He came and said no bomb was used. After four days, he's now accusing IPOB of planning to launch a wave of attacks and bombings of people's properties in Lagos. How can we do this? Today? So, so, such cowardly acts is impossible. We cannot do it. That's the for you. <laughs> he is a Tinubu's boy. Tinubu thinks that he can damage our reputation, stop what we are trying to accomplish by setting our people free, and walk closely, or should I say, uh, majestically into us rock as a president of the zoo. I am very, very happy that, you know, their stupid and idiotic utterances are now cementing the bond between the Yoruba people and the people of Biafra. We have, we now know who our common enemies are. They are part of those that call themselves the elite in the South. And of course, they are full of henchmen, the ginger weed in Abuja and elsewhere in the Sharia core area North. Their divide and rule tactics will not work again. This is 2021 and not 1967. Elohim have determined that we are going our separate ways and uh, that's what we're going to do. Maybe sometime in the future, our people may come together to, to be in one country. But not for now. We must go our separate ways. 
and that's what we want them to understand. We want them to understand this. And I'm sure that it is now beginning to sink in. It is now beginning to sink in. This very man, this very man, very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. What Tinubu is doing is very, is uh, highly regrettable and extremely sad. Highly regrettable and sad. I'm happy today that uh, my Yoruba brethren know who the common enemy is. People in Yoruba land are wiser today. The idea of using ethnic sentiments to bring hatred is gone. I cannot recall any Igbo person or group in history having killed a Yoruba person for whatever reason. But the Fulani Janjaweed, with their brainwashed Hausa peasants, are the ones killing people. But these days, the Hausa people are clean, to be honest with you. I exonerate them. Nobody wants to address the issues on the ground. Who come to the market last week? They want to apportion blame. They are planning to attack Yoruba assets in Lagos and say these IPOB members that did it. Just to bring their divide and rule tactics into our agitation for freedom, thereby dividing us. But they cannot divide us. I am telling Bola Ahmed, the Tunubu, you are a thief and a criminal. I will do a program for you. Not yet. Not all those documentary and put, put a lion or put it long. Your life on air. I will destroy you completely. I'm waiting for you. I will destroy you. All those media houses you're paying, the one idiot called the wheel. I don't know who is the wheel or all those nonsense. I'm going to catch all of you. I will destroy all of you one after the other. I will decimate you. By the time I finish with you, Tinubu, you can no longer come outside. Ask the Sadiqin Fulani of Imo State. Who puts on him? Can he come outside? He cannot come outside anymore. He can never be forgiven in this life. Never ever be forgiven. I will deal with you, Bola Ahmed, the Tinubu, and this idiotic police commissioner. Hakim, whatever your name is. In your next life, you will be afraid of IPOB. You don't know who we are. You, you, you want to go back to your old, dark, evil, wicked ways. We are not going to have it. Lagos is not Biafra land. Lagos belongs to the Zedua land. IPOB cannot attack Lagos. We are not a terrorist group for information. Lying against IPOB is in vain. That was how you lied during NSAS. Because you want your money to be flowing. I, I felt very, very sad and sorry for those that bought into your ethnic jingoism and all that rubbish. You want to try because it worked during NSAS. You, you think it's going to work again? People are now wiser. People are now wiser. And I, I remember that Al Haji Mrs. Medinat Olatimeji wrote very movingly about uh, some of your sophisticated morons in the West. It's not my job, it's for you people to deal with them at the appropriate time. But anybody who raises his ugly head or her ugly head to try to disparage what we are doing, you get it from me. To be your finish, you can never smell us rock. You are gone. I will do program for you every two, two days. Any day you come out to announce that you're going to be there, I will, I will decimate you. Like me. Uh, all these people, that I'm sure those of you in Lagos, you know a place called Shema Petroleum, beside Westminster Market, along the same ocean, the expressway. I now want to tell you who caused the bombing who, who firebombed Ushu the market last week Thursday? Because I have to intel. We have the M branch. And there is nothing that happens in music that we don't know. And I told those of them, somebody to tell that, uh, that useless Ushadem man, the Sergeant Fulani, Supreme Court Administrator of Imo State. I know where you slept. In then they say, it's not an official duty, so I allowed you to, to sleep there and go free. I know where you're sleeping in the Queen State. I know where you I just want to mention only two places. I know where you slept in Numbisa three days ago. I know where you slept in Ebony State two days ago. Just to let you know that we know. There is a place called Shema Depot. This depot is formerly called Akuten Depot. It is now owned by Shema Petroleum. 
Shema is S H E M A. Please, people must listen very attentively, please. It is beside Westminster Market along Bushwood Expressway. Last night, two nights ago, to be precise, the full army is offloaded containers full of arms and ammunition. These containers were escorted by the military and offloaded two nights ago, and those containers were still there after this very morning. They did not move it to Ojo Cantonment or to Ikeja Cantonment. Ammunition dumped at this Shema Petroleum beside Westminster Market along Goshi Expressway. These are the same people that destroyed that uh, market in Oshiri. Now do you understand it? I am giving the police commission because he's a fool. He doesn't know what's happening in Lagos, but I know what's happening in Lagos. Are there no containers of flooded at Shema Petroleum escorted by the military two nights ago? Yes or no? You, you are the police commissioner. You don't even know what's happening. Now let me tell you and the whole world what is happening in Lagos. We are the full of offloaded arms with which to cause mayhem with the support of Tinubu to tag IPOB. The same thing they did during the war. They will put on Biafra uniforms that they are God be raping women in a cat. They go to war they kill villagers. They say, oh, it's Biafra soldiers. They, say, they, uh, they came here and they killed us. We say, lie. Subterfuge. That's what you want to try. So, Tinubu, you are prepared to kill and destroy your businesses and lives only for you to drive a wedge between Piafra and Ududu Wajidetos to pave the way for you to go to Asolok. Tinubu is a thief, a complete vagabond and criminal, a liar. The person he's calling his mom is not his mom. Or the person he called his mom is not his mom. A man of 79 years old took away 10 years and became 69. These are the people that some of you fools are even discussing or talking about to, to become your president. Are you not foolish? As I said, I'll do a program for him. Police Commissioner Tinubu and all the other sophisticated morons in the West. If you go to Shema Petroleum, formerly Akuten Depot, near Westminster Market along Osho, the expressway, you will find container of arms and ammunition with which the Fulani is intent to overrun Lagos. And you blame it on IPOB. Because you're foolish. You know nothing. We know everything. Everything about Nigeria is fraud and criminality. Full and people stole at one billion naira from the coffers of NMPC. Nobody, these are people that can. We want to fight corruption. Corruption is everywhere. If you don't kill corruption, corruption will kill you. All of a sudden, AGF, Attorney General of the Federation, Malami, a full and man, plus to cover up 91 billion stolen by NMPC, but they are busy chasing people with laptop, EFCC. People may be. Uh, stealing one or two thousand dollars, <laughs> but Fulani is stealing in billions, and that's why I, I, I like them all the way they steal and they get some of you, they get some of you to somehow pretend that you don't know what is going on. Yes, this is working. Night one billion missing. A Fulani man is covering up for his Fulani brothers, but in the east, in fact, they are across the entire south. All they are trying to do is to instigate division so that EFCC can come and arrest people and get away scot free. Now, do you understand it? <laughs> oh dear. That is the people for you. <laughs> that is them for you. The same fool and is stealing your money, telling you they're investigating corruption in Nigeria. The same DSS telling you, oh, we are working to, to keep our country safe. Are the same people giving arms to bandits so that when they get the ransom, they split it. And you're telling me that people are well, that you people are normal. Bandits reveal how they receive weapons from SSS agents and split the ransom in Nigeria tomorrow now. So, uh, uh, DSS now do something. 
they are part and parcel of the criminal enterprise called Nigeria. They are supplying their people with helicopters. Two nights ago, at Shema Petroleum in Oshodi, they offloaded two containers full of ammunition. The Nigerian army are the people supplying terrorists to kill all of you. Then you wake up in the morning and you say, oh, I'm in Nigeria. I believe you want Nigeria. Do you know that General Abdul Salami Abubakar has been linked with Fulani bandits and terror groups? He came out to say, oh, it's frivolity. Don't, don't associate me with that. But we remember all of you saying that an attack against Boko Haram is an attack against the North. And Abdul Salami Abubakar, why should you not be blamed? You are a suspect. Do you know that Nigerian military helicopter we are supplying bandits with arms inside Niger State? The same army that they claim are coming to the East to, 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 to re-strategize on how to bring peace. Come now, you're going to die there. How many people are going to abduct? How many will you abduct, I'm asking you? You're wasting your time. You're fighting a losing battle. Go and look at the history of nationalist movements all over the world. You don't defeat them. Eventually, they will be free. Eventually, we are going to be free. Why do you think that Abdul Salami Abubakar uh, was fingered in the help uh, or the supplies to Fulani bandits and terrorists in Niger State? Because he is the cause of your problem today with his 1999 constitution. You know, I don't believe in all these movements to, to destroy the 1999 constitution because the Fulani will never ever listen. They will never ever listen. Never. That is why we must be very, very careful as to how we proceed. Abu Salam Abu Bakr, you gave the zoo 1999 constitution that was a military decree number 24 of 1999. Nobody, I think, uh, only I sat down and explained this whole constitutional garbage to the whole of you, uh, to some of you that paid attention to him. That very concern was not subjected to referendum. It was written by Fulani people, does not provide for state constitution to create their own federation. Because if you are in a federation, the state must have their own laws. They must have no constitution. Go to USA, you will see it there. Go to the state of Pennsylvania, they have no constitution. Governor Pennsylvania, after all, you wanted to copy what a white man did in America. And of course, in keeping with our way of life in Africa, everything is upside down. Now, let me tell you why Abdul Salami Abubakar is a suspect. They said, Abdul Salami Abubakar said in his constitution that all of you Nigerians handed over your land and resources to the federal government. And if you're handing over your land and resources to the federal government, that means you're handing it over to the Fulani Janja with Caliphate. Do you understand? Some governors answer chief security officer only by mouth. No governor in the south can give order to the PC and they will carry it out unless the PC wants to. If you give them an order which they, which they disagree with, they'll tell you, oh, Abuja didn't ask us to do so, so ask all your governors now. That is why the army can come in and kill as much people as possible on the road. Abdul Salam al in his constitution says that you can marry a girl less than 18 years of age. My God in heaven. Zoo. Zoological Republic. They are the ones that put Sharia in the constitution. There is no mention of Christianity. It's only Sharia that you have in the constitution. And some of you are telling me that sections 275 to 279 regarding non-state religion I read it very carefully. It's all about Sharia. Sharia was mentioned in the constitution of a secular state. All of you wake up in the morning. 
transition. Let's see another transition. Ah, transition. Ah, is it? Feel sorry for you people. It was Abdul Salami Abubakar that encouraged the army to supply arms to bandits. The same people that in 1953 wanted Nigeria to break today, they are saying they don't want Nigeria to break anymore. If you want Nigeria to break, you have to go to war to break Nigeria. This is what Fulani are telling us now. But when Fulani wanted to secede, Round about this time in 1953, May of 1953, Fulani, the North wanted to cease from Nigeria. Nobody told them, you have to go to war to accomplish it. Instead, Asiki repeated with them, begged them, and they agreed. These are the things that some of you ought to bear in mind when you discuss the issues of the Zoological Republic, because things are happening I tell you that things are happening. Things are happening. And the zoo is gone. It's finished. If they can be so desperate, the zoo is gone. Senate fixes zonal public hearings for May 27, 28 on constitutional review. <laughs> it's breaking. Constitutional review. Because you are hurt. IP will be Chineke because you know. Hi. All these things are not happening because of what you did. Because of your consistency, you you reassured our Yoruba brethren that a lot can be achieved by being honest and consistent in pursuit of what is right before God and before man. All those things that were impossible before are now becoming possible. But we are saying to them, it is too late. Because the Arewa Consultative Forum are now telling us that they don't support secession because there is nothing wrong with Nigerian structure. If there is nothing wrong with Nigerian structure, Arewa Constitutive Forum, why are you now having a constitutional review? Why? You know, we always win. I told you, we always win. We are getting very close. We are getting very, very close. We are winning this very battle. I can assure you, we are winning it. Now they want to consider. In the same day, in the morning, the same people that the South we are waiting upon, the same people that we are, we are waiting upon from the South, told us that you cannot secede without war. In the evening, they are now amending, or they have now agreed to amend the Constitution. People that told us that we should, uh, 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 if you want to get Jaffa, go to war. But when in 1953 you wanted uh, um, uh, your Araba, I don't want to go. Why did anybody not ask you to go to war? What is wrong with you people? Do you see how we always win our arguments? We always win it because we have facts and we have figures. And we have truth on our side. We have truth on our side. And that is why you can never, ever defeat us. That was why when Governor Autumn said, fire for fire. If you kill us, we'll kill you. In Benway State. And now, that's considered a review. We want to review this, we want to review that. The only language the Fulani understand is fire for fire. If you turn the other, if they slap you on one side and you turn the other cheek, they'll cut off your head. The sooner you will understand this, the better. That's, uh, two days ago, I was, uh, I came down very hard on pastors and preachers. But I said some. And I want to make an exception tonight for Pastor Adefras of um, House on the Rock. For his consistency lately. Because he's advised people now. I bring you greetings. <laughs> if you don't have <laughs> plan B, I know you have faith. I have faith too, but I have plan B. With technology, I can speak to you from anywhere in the world. Get yourself a plan B. Whether it's an Okada to take you to Cameroon or flying boat to Senegoda, a hole in the ground, a bunker as we call it, just get yourself a plan B because these people are crazy. They are not us. The whole bunch of them. And watch the signs because it can happen just like this. He snapped his fingers. 
the collapse of the zoo. And he went on to criticize the 1999 constitution. That should tell you all you need to know about the damnable zoological republic. And the reason why all of us, all of us right now, must rise up in unison across the South to say enough is enough. That is the only language to fully understand. Fulani doesn't believe that uh, if you're from the South and Fulani people are in your village raping, killing, kidnapping, and you're talking about one Nigeria, they see you as a fool. So you think if you appeal to them, we believe in unity of Nigeria, they will leave you alone. No. The only time they will respond is when you call for broke to, 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 to destroy the whole zoo. They start panicking. That is why today they have announced a constitutional review because of this same um, family of IPOB, because we are not going to give up. They understand it very well. We are not giving up. We are not giving up. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. And I want to state tonight that IPOB do not carry any arms. I want to make it very clear. ESN do carry arms, but can never ever attack any civilian population. It's impossible. Not in our land. Our job is to protect lives and properties. Our problem is with the caliphate, capture the Florida Republic of Nigeria, and not with indigenous people anywhere in Nigeria. I am an advocate of freedom for everybody. Therefore, I will not be in support of anybody. Harming anybody in the process will not happen. We are only defending our land. And I want to assure non-terrorist Fulani people, even including Fulani Northerners, in Southeast, and in fact in all of Biafra, which is South and South South, that I personally guarantee your safety. I have issued very strict directives that nobody should touch a non-terrorist. Nobody should touch them. Be there northerners or whatever. Nobody should touch them. But all of you in our land do not take sides or get involved with what the government is doing. Do not defend any police station. If you defend the police station, you will die. Do not defend any army barracks or any army checkpoint. If you defend them, you're going to die. Because men are on the move. When they were killing us at Ampo, why didn't you come to defend us at Ampo? National High School, Abba. In Ugochan, huh? their snipers were taking us down one after the other. Why didn't you come at them? If you are as idiotic and as hopeless to stand to defend a police station, you will go down. Because men are very, very angry. I need to bury a gun so with 2,000 heads. Do you understand me? If you block any pathway, when men are on the move, you will fall. And you would have died for nothing. But we do not touch. My instructions to ESN is nobody should be touched. You remain in the forest and keep on doing your work. In the bushes of our land. Anything you see, they are kill it. Anything you see in our forest, kill it. Cattle. No matter who the person is, because it is bushmeat. That's what it is. Uh, uh, unless you want to, to to turn to refugees in Ambazonia, which is never ever going to happen. I won't allow that to happen. And this evening, very briefly, I want to respond to the lovely Mrs. Tambuwala of River State, very very briefly. That that aquatic animal. Because he said it's from rivers. Anything that comes from a river is do not speak for the people. You only have one single vote. And it's a shame that Fulani people are, are even in your village, preventing our mothers from going to the farm. You quizlings will never learn from history. But allow me to teach you what you don't know that somebody actually brought to my attention a few days ago. Obako, Ikwere, gathering of Ikwere people. Obako is an Igbo word, mind you. You wrote, to, you wrote a letter to the Bini Kingdom seeking to identify with them. But the Bini people told you that they have no evidence that you are related to them. 
this fact is on record. The justice said that we must be very careful as a people not to allow the quest. By this is just written by the good man. We must not allow our quest, or should I say, the quest by some uh, people to be politically correct to cast us into the bottomless pit. Nobody, and I did not say a equally is evil. It's not saying that. Uh, but it is doubtless that Ikwere, as a multi ancestral ethnic block, has most of its ancestry traced to Igbo land. All the crap that Igbo hates Ikwere is just a post civil war narrative and script that has never worked for us. The same thing they tried to do between us and the, our Yoruba brothers and sisters. They will always divide you. The only reason why they have oil wells, they control the oil wells in your land, is because they were able to divide you. The only reason why they killed Cancer River was because they were able to divide. Once it's divided, once they cut you out, they conquer you. All the oil wells in the land belongs to them in the north. And they killed Cancer River in the process. The same thing will happen to you. Uh, the, the writer went on to explain what is called carbon dating and all the rest of it. I want you to understand this. There is something called carbon dating. Carbon dating, I'm sure you know what it is. It is there for us to apply further beyond rabble rousing, according to Livingston. He wrote this very brilliant piece. Let us write it this way. What is Bini about Ikwere? Bini people denied any link with Ikwere, it's on record. Ironically, LL people are in court in Bini claiming that they own Bini and not the other way. <laughs> they claim from me that they were, not, they were in the land of Bini as owners before the arrival of Bini people, which is correct, of course, Igodomi Igodom. The war between Oba and the two people that led to migration, even present day Iyala came from Igodomi Igodom land. Are you also aware that a lot of prominent Igodomi people that have traced their ancestry to Ungwa, to Aro, in Igbo land. Are you aware that Ohaji in Igbo state is an Igbo clan? Ohaji, Ebema, Ohaji in Igbo state is Igbo clan. Part of Ohaji is in is in is in uh, River State. Part is in Igbo state. The same family. They come to me to you. I want to educate the idiot. Are you aware that Ohaji Inimo State is an Ikwere clan which Professor Ojinti affirmed in his book, History of Ikwere, Volume 1? Do you know about Ikwere Ede in Imo State? In Imo State, oh, Ikwere? When you struggle to assert an erroneous Bini ancestry or kill the Igbo roots, you raise a flawed argument of abandoned property yet for the records. Because you were trained with stolen property. That is why you do not have the, the, the cause to stand up and identify who you are. Because if you say you are evil, the land will kill you. Because you stole your brother's property, as is written in the book, in the very holy book of Exodus. Thou is a commandment from God. You should not convert your neighbor's property. You don't know. Those are them there. And you probably cannot evil. Because it's in the in the by in the scriptures, thou shalt not covet your brother's property, nor take his wife. You cannot do it. It's a commandment from God, a commandment from Elohim. That's what you're running from. Because you stole properties during and after the war. The shame is too much for you to bear. So the only thing for you to do is to remove yourself. Now let me continue. Mrs. Tambuwa, if your cocaine can allow you to, to listen to what I'm saying tonight, suggests an MP, MPI, first and last equal to be conferred with knighthood of the Order of the British Empire, OBE, by Queen Elizabeth II of England in 1960, identified himself as an evil man. He was a knight of the realm. Maybe you don't know him, suggesting MP, because you don't, you, the only history you learn is from Hennessy, cocaine and the face of Tambuwa, uh, or, or, or maybe he's sleeping on your back, let me not go too far. He is from the ancient kingdom of Isiobo, Sa'am, 
Sir, works tirelessly for ego advancement. Are you listening? I'm sure you've heard of Dr. Obi Wale, the first Igwe PhD holder. He was a senator and university lecturer. He was also the only Igwe in the 1978 Constituent Assembly where he was elected as one of the 50 wise men that drafted the 1999 Constitution. The great Dr. Wale identified fully with his Igbo heritage and was killed because of it. Maybe that is your fear. Didn't stop there. I'm sure you know about Okogule uh, Wanade, which is Wanade in the state. Wanade, as we say where we come from, the first equal registrar of any university, first and only equal poet and paramount title holder of Eze or Yameru, where you have present day comprehensive college in Polokri, was his ancestral home before the British vacated them. In fact, our problem started with the British. They came to Borokri and took all of us away. That's an infatuation by force. One or the remained a respected member of Unzuko Ibo and of Hanese Ndiyo to the end of his life. Are you listening? Kuken Snotter, are you listening? Mrs. Tambua. You remember Emmanuel Aguma, who was the former mayor of Ibocha, Potagot, as principal of St. John College in Diobu, he was the first equator to head any college. One of the six pre-independence equator university graduates, former administrator of Port Harcourt province and the defunct People's Republic of Biafra. He was an equator man and he served in Biafra. We can, are you listening? Emmanuel Adoma. Equator man served in Biafra government. He was the first equator minister in 1979. Akuma was also a member of Ohanes and Dingbo. Are you listening? Koken Snodder. There is a Manuel Uriji, a respected local government administrator, traditional ruler, a commissioner in Old River State, and co Igbo nationalist. More Igbo than my own father. He was a nationalist. He's on the The immediate past deputy secretary general of Ohanes and Dingbo, Jivaisi Wormo is an illustrious Igwe son from LN. He is known to assert his Igwe identity. Equally valid, Chief Jackson, Wormo Nasu, from Umukushi. They are from God knows where. And out of fear, your criminality and cowardice, you're allowing them to lord it over us. Maybe because um, of Tambua. You know, love can do anything. You know, love is blind. I know that some of you defended uh, girls or boys in those days that their fathers or their mothers owned the supermarket. Uh, I think in my time, if you defend a girl that the mother fries akara, you're in heaven. At least you eat akara, fresh akara every day in school. That's how it is. Maybe his love is blind. That is the way it is. We are all one people from Ikodomigodo all the way to, Bakati, to Bakasi Peninsula into Ambazonia. We are one people. I'm asking you, please, to do your research very well before coming out of our road. We have come to the end of our program this very evening. And uh, for those <laughs> writing rubbish about, um, should I say, Interpol, if you want, if you want who if you want to know who is being looked for by Interpol, just go on their website and type the person's name in. That's all. The person will appear there. Tinubu, you are late. You don't know what you're doing. We live in a digital age. You no longer control the news narrative. We do. Because we are IPOV. And that is why Elohim said that Biafra shall be their religion. Here on this radio, Biafra is where they will worship. Because I, God Almighty in heaven, is their God. From me, from here, as always, it is. Good evening.